Human rights activist Sheo Sani joins us now via Zoom from Kaduna to discuss the security situation in the state and recurring attacks by bandits. Uh, Senator uh, Sheo Sani, uh, it's good to have you join me this afternoon, uh, Senator Sani. Thank you for having me. Great. Now, uh, it's, it's really unfortunate everyone is so concerned regarding the issue of uh, killings in parts of the country and if we narrow it down to the recent development where the son of Senator ba uh, Bala Ibn Naala Abdul Karim was killed in his home in Kaduna State it draws attention to the re more more attention to realities on ground and according to the statement by the senator he's saying that uh, well his son the life of his son is not more than any other Nigerian and that uh, he's hoping that the death of his son will will be will play a role in uh, finding lasting solution to the challenges of uh, Nigeria. I, I wonder what you make of this uh, when Nigerians are saying that these security challenges have been in the outskirts of large cities. Right now, it seems to be coming into the city and it seems nobody, uh, everybody one way or the other is being affected. Well, thank you for having me uh, once again. Well, uh, first of all, my condolences to the distinguished senator about the killing of his son. And secondly, uh, it is a fact that uh, Kaduna and states in the northwestern and north central parts of Nigeria are virtually under the siege of bandits. And these bandits have been operating most times by blocking routes and uh, sometimes raiding outskirts of cities and targeting schools. But uh, on the issue of uh, the late Abdul Karim, it's unusual. Uh, though any criminal activities nowadays can, nowadays can be attributed to bandits. And the name bandits are used for an armed gang of people that operate in the bushes of the Northwest and that have been kidnapping people and students and other uh, uh, sections of the society. But specifically on this is strange in the sense that um, his house was invaded and he was found to have been strangled to death. And as reports have it, some vehicles were uh, cut out of the house. So what we know about bandits uh, when they hold their victims, they forcefully take him off to wherever they want to and make phone calls and uh, make demands for ransom. But in this case, it's unusual. So it has the hallmark of an assassination as far as I'm concerned. But um, the way bandits operate in this city is not as what we have seen in the case of Abu Karim Bala ibn Allah. But in every case, uh, criminals that have been terrorizing the states have been doing it with impunity. And uh, it is clear that nowhere is safe and nobody is safe. They have done it with Greenfield University, uh, Bethel High School, and uh, Nigerian Defense Academy and other schools in the state. So in this case, uh, I can perhaps say it is more of work of an uh, assassins that have targeted him uh, from the points of the statement made by the spokesperson of uh, the father of uh, all right. Um, Kaduna State is seen by so many people as the military headquarters of Nigeria or the security headquarters with the sighting of uh, military institutions, uh, the, the defense uh, equipment manufacturing uh, and so many others that are sighted in Kaduna State. How concerned are you or maybe even, let me use the word disappointed, are you that Security challenges can be so high within Kaduna State with the sighting of all of these military, uh, uh, you know, centers, universities, headquarters of different things uh, with different, different parts of the state. 
Well, it is not only disappointing, but it is disgraceful and shameful that with over a dozen uh, presidents of military formations in the state, uh, people are still insecure. It's unfortunate that uh, with all the trillions being pumped into security and defense, and with the large presence of military and other segment of the security apparatus in the state, uh, people can be kidnapped at any time. And it has not just, uh, it's not just restricted to the city, but uh, outskirts of the city, but in the northern and the southern part of the state, uh, virtually we are in a state of war. Uh, there are about four entrances to Kaduna, from southern Kaduna, from Abuja, from Lagos, and from Zaria. And you can virtually say that it is impossible for you to go out or inside into the state without the fear of falling into the hands of bandits. And lessons have never been learned in the sense that they continue to operate with impunity. And unfortunately, the authorities have still not been able to get to the root of those who are behind these kidnappings and killings. Because from what you can see, hundreds of millions of Naira have been given out by people to these kidnappers as ransom. And each time any of these kidnappers has been arrested, you will see a hungry, a famished, a wretched looking person. And then you ask, where is all this money going? And not only that, hundreds of villages have been displaced and people have sold their homes, their farms to pay ransom. All, all right, we have a Senator Sunny. That has been able to protect our people. Yes. It is not disappointing, it's disgraceful and shameful that at this hour, at this time, in the history of our country, our people are living in fear and the government appears to be helpless. All right, Senator Sani, let me ask you this before I let you go. Uh, reports from Borno State uh, indicates that uh, members of the terrorist group Boko Haram are repenting in, in droves. In fact, the last report shows that oh, close to about 3,000 of them had repented. And uh, the Borno State government is looking, holding a meeting as regards how to approach and how to handle or go forward with them. What is your concern, especially from having people who had caused a lot of havoc, uh, you know, repenting and then, you know, and then we put all that behind. What, what do you say about this? Well, before we uh, go into the repentance, I think it's important we ask ourselves, how does this happen and from where? Well, it is clear that there is a battle going on between the members of the al Qaeda section of the terrorist enclave and also the I I ISIS represented by Israel in this part of the country. So it is possible that some of them are running away from superior firepower and are moving towards the civil populace to fake a surrender. But we should be very careful because for terrorists that have lived for so long in such a wilderness and have been used to killing people and unleashing in mayhem for such a long time. The idea of simply accepting their surrender and repentance have to be traded with caution. We cannot just embrace them and forgive them without the consent of the victims of their violence and bloodshed. And secondly, when they provided themselves willingly for surrender, there is a need to, first of all, put them in court quarantine uh, to, for, the, for these authorities to ascertain and extract as much information from them All and right. then do a background check on what led them oh. to such surrender. All they right, Senator Sani, I, I'm, I'm afraid we have to uh, edit here for now uh, so that we can find other time for us to talk about this as we get along. We must thank you so much for spending your time with us. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you for having me. Thank you.